welcome to the Camogie Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV, Tipperary Camogie's very own YouTube channel. I'm Journey Canan. I'm delighted to be joined by Tipperary Camogie PRO, Philly Ryan. Philly, you're very welcome to the show. Thanks, Charlene, for having me on. I suppose the big news for Tipperary Camogie in the last few weeks has been the announcement of FBD Insurance as the new sponsors of the Tipperary Camogie Minor and Adult Club Championship. This has been fantastic news, a uh, great development for Tipperary Camogie. Uh, it sees FBD Insurance come on board, sponsoring the minor, the senior, the intermediate, the junior A, the junior B and the junior B club championships. So um, a great uh, a deal for Tipperary Camogie and for FBD Insurance. Um, I know the launch was held a couple of weeks ago in the County Camogie grounds in the RAG. Uh, Philly, you were there. I've seen some videos and photos. looked like a fantastic morning. Yeah, it was full of colour because um, we had a five-person delegation from FBD uh, led by uh, the chairperson of FBD Trust, Michael Berkery of IFA fame, plus representatives from Nina, Clonmel and Turles districts of FBD and their marketing manager, Mary Dunphy. So uh, great turnout and uh, captains from almost all of the Camogie teams in Tipperary, uh, from Lara down to Carrick Swan. So um uh, a very impressive uh, uh, launch there in, in the RAG last Saturday week. And um, just uh, our, thank our treasurer, Anya O'Donnell, who uh, first of all secured uh, FBD for uh, one of the adult championships last year, the Junior A, and they've stretched now to do all the adult championships, as you said, and minor, and it's for tr a three-year deal. So um, a, a big thanks to FBD Insurance, and uh, <clears throat> hopefully it'll be a big success and uh, over the next three years for them too. Yeah, it's great news. Um, everyone knows FBD um, Insurance, um, great company, uh, works closely in the community. And we've also seen them involved in sponsorship with Team Ireland Olympics. And obviously would, they would have been known for sponsoring and the Tipperary GA Club Championships. So it's great to see them come on board uh, and sponsoring the Camogie. I suppose it says a lot for F about FBD and a lot for Tipperary Camogie. Yes, to, to have the same sponsor as Tipperary GA Club Championship is, is, is a great matchup too, isn't it? And the Senior and Intermediate Club Championship kicked off uh, last Saturday. So uh, we're going to look back on some of the games. Um, there was actually one minor game as well. Um, the minor championship started the week before. And just uh, on Saturday gone, there was a minor, or Friday gone, there was a minor C game played. I'll just call out the result there. Money goal and um, beat Killadangan 110 to 7 points. Um, so I suppose the minor championship is on hold now uh, while the adult uh, championship is underway. So we had the senior, uh, we had two games in the senior championship in uh, group one. And we had a repeat of the 2020 uh, county final with Drummond Inch and Clonty. And in the other game, we had Turla Sarsfields, uh, Welcome Anna Carty. So Drummond Clonty, um, like I said, a repeat of the 2020 uh, county final. Um, this time, Drummond Inch won uh, on a goal of on a score of one fifteen to ten points. So an eight point win there for Drum. Um, I suppose they didn't get it all their own way. It was four points a piece at the water break, and then Drum stretched their or went out ahead and led at eight points to four at half time. And I suppose the crucial score came in the forty seventh minute from Eamon McGrath. Um, I suppose I don't know uh, if you heard that much about this game, Philly. I know you weren't at it, but I suppose. Clonty is probably a bit over reliant and caught the van. Um, she played kind of deep and got six points from freeze and a, a, a sideline cut, which is worth two points. But the only ever other score was Emer Burke, and I suppose it's always going to be hard to win games with only two people getting on the scoreboard. Yeah, I suppose um, Clonty probably hit a bit by uh, uh, Clodagh Kirk's uh, uh, season long injury and also Sarah Friday um, emigrating uh, for work to. Uh, Overseas, so uh, a big loss for um, Clonaldy there, uh, but they did welcome back Cora Hennessy, who was a former Tipperary senior, senior Camogie player. So and 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 led them to a, a league success in junior last year. So um, Clonaldy will be strong as this championship goes on. So uh, I'd say they will 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 be in the shake up later in the year also. Yeah, I suppose what caught my eye uh, was the t the drum and inch uh, half back line. Um, we had Mairead Everson centre back, who obviously is a tip senior at wing back. Eve McGrath was on one wing, and then Neve Trassi, another Tipperary senior camogie player, on the other wing. So I don't know if there's many uh, clubs in the county uh, or even in the country that would have three senior inter county players playing in one line. So I suppose, is that saying something about the way 
uh, Drum and Inch are looking to set up this year? Uh, yes, uh, I mean, Drum and Inch have uh, so many uh, county players in their squad, Cueva Bork and Goal, and then, uh, you know, uh, uh, Marion Campion up front, if Emer McGrath, they've such score power as well as a fantastic defence. So I think uh, Drum are fairly balanced all round. They're going for three in a row. They had good experience in monster clubs and things. So uh, Drum have to be hot favourites this year for um, for the uh, county title again, I, in my opinion. Yeah, I suppose they've set out their stall early. And speaking of the halfback line, Ethan McGrath actually got three points and Neve Tracy got a point from wing back. But um, like you said, Clone to have a big say in this championship yet. You know, they Courtney Ryan in midfield, Emer Lukeman um, in full back. Um, you know, very strong team. And uh, I suppose they'd be disappointed with that result. But like you said, it's early days. Um, another result then was Turles Sartre. Great result for Turles Sartre. It's the first game of senior club championship. They bet Anna Carty four goals and 12 points to 10 points. So was this a surprise result for you, Philly? It was because I was at the Anna Carty Cashel semi final last year and uh, um, inside in Cashel. And Anna Carty uh, and Cashel at Humdinger of a match, a late goal by. Uh, Anna Fahey had right at the end sneaked it for cash. So I had um, Anna Carty up there in the top three or four. And for Turles to have such a dominant win over Anna Carty was a big surprise, especially Anna Carty having had such great underage success over the past few years. Um, it would feel that Anna Carty would be growing into senior ranks. But Turles have come right, stormed right through from uh, intermediate ranks to senior and, and, and uh, won well here. So I suppose it was a bit of a surprise. But um, just look at the talent uh, through the Torles team. Uh, the number of girls that play tip intermediate and tip senior, uh, they, they have the talent, Torles, I think, to trouble other teams. Yeah, often teams that come up from intermediate maybe take a few years to adjust to senior and, you know, they might even struggle for a year or two. But, you know, Torles, like you said, with players like Karen Kendi, uh, Laura Lachnan, um, they had young Aoife Dwyer, Tipperary Minor. She scored 2-1 against Anna Carty. Um, so, look, they have plenty of talent there. And, you know, Kira Cummins there in midfield. I think they'll have a big say in this championship. And I suppose the interesting thing for both Drum and Inch and Turles is, you know, they have uh, Munster Finals. Last year's Munster Final is supposed to look forward to in November. I think that, that games have been fixed. I think it's around the 27th, 28th of November that weekend. And I suppose both teams obviously are going to want to win their respective county finals anyway but I suppose they definitely want to be playing well having a good performance you know going far in the competition because you know they have that monster final to play at both senior and intermediate and the last thing you want to be is knocked out with the championship early and having to train away for weeks on end for last year's monster final so you know I suppose both teams really I think are really geared up for for this champ for this senior championship both Roman Inch and Turles starts with Definitely, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think uh, those two teams will, will, will be in the run. Uh, but um, I just the groups and the other teams in the other group too. Uh, some cash will come in strong there at underage, having won under sixteen A for a few years there, and strong minor this year. And uh, Borges with their seven in a row, uh, you couldn't rule out some of the teams in the other group uh, also, uh, Geraldine. Yeah. So speaking of group two, um, that begins on this coming Saturday. Uh, like you mentioned there, Burgess O'Hara hosting Cashel. I know they met last year, only three points between the sides. Um, unfortunately for Cashel, I suppose Orla, you know, she's an AFL uh, star as well as everything else. So she's got back over in Australia. So they're going to miss her for the club championship again. I suppose just the way the seasons are falling. Um, I was asking you, I suppose, earlier about Saoirse Ryan. Um, I thought she, I think she's a fantastic player. I know she was injured last year. I was wondering, was she back? And, you mentioned that she's playing full forward with Cashel, so that's uh, well, the a big change. Word is that she, she has she has played full forward in some of their challenge matches now. Whether she'll revert to her normal uh, full back or centre back role um, later in the season, we do not know. Maybe it's just uh, bringing her back gently from injury, but she has been tried full forward for Cashel this year, which is a bit of a, str a strange one. But um, Cashel possibly could be without Quiva Purdue, who's made the Ireland Day hockey squad as well. So. If they're without two forwards, they're probably trying to strengthen up the forwards too. Yeah, and I suppose a big player for them this year would definitely be Kareem Blair. Um, you know, she I thought she really was impressive for Tipperary seniors this year, whether she was half back, midfield, and the forward. So we expect her to to have a big part against uh Bird Suhara on Saturday. And um, Bird Suhara at home, um, they would have been disappointed not getting to this county final last year. 
and um, beaten by Clonty in the semi final. You know, they still have plenty of talent. Quiva Maher, Jenny Grace. Um, I, I expect them to have a big say in the championship as well, as you mentioned. So it'll be really interesting to see how that game goes. The other game in that group is Nina and Silvermines. Um, Silvermines great, had a great league campaign, got to the league final, beat by Clonty. Um, you know, they have the likes of Aoife or Kira Ryan there off on the Tip Intermediate team. You know, they're always really coached, well coached, well organized side. Um, so that'll be interesting. They have to travel to Nina on Saturday. Um, I'm looking forward to see where Grace O'Brien lines out for Nina because we know she was playing midfield with Tipperary this year, but I suppose she'd be no, more known as a forward. So how would you see that game going between Nina and Silvermines? I, I, I couldn't call it really because um, I know Silvermines had a good league campaign, but um, you know, up front, if if uh, Nina have score power from Caroline Brown or, or Grace O'Brien there, they could they could trouble um, Silvermines. And uh, a couple of years ago, Nina had fantastic uh, underage players like Hazel McCall of Ruth Hassett coming through. So um, uh, uh, Silvermines had Sarah Madden, a couple of more county minors coming through also. So it, it's it's a hard one to call because uh, uh, neither Nina or Silvermines probably progressed as far as they wish to last year's senior championship, but maybe this will be their year. Maybe their, their younger talents will come true for both clubs this year. So in group one, then uh, it's Clonty and Turles Sarsby. So that's going to be really interesting. Uh, obviously, Clonty will look uh, to get a win after their loss to Drum at the weekend. So, but then Turles will be coming in, in great, um, I suppose, great form after, you know, lots of confidence after the win over Anna Carty. So that's going to be a, a really uh, cracking, cracker game, I think, on Saturday evening. Uh, that's in Clonty. And then Tumi Vara, um, their first game, they had a bye last weekend. So uh, Anna Carty will travel to Tumi Vara again. Tumi Vara will be looking to get their championship off to a winning start. Um, I thought Max Quigley was very impressive for them in for Tipperary Intermediate, same as Jelan Cork. Um, obviously, they have Sean and Cork as well there. So be interesting to see how Tumi Vara go this year. Um, and then Drummond Inch have a boy. So that's all the senior championship fixtures this weekend. And um, we switched to intermediate. Um, there was three intermediate games played so far. FBD Insurance Intermediate Championship. Um, a big, big win for Naka Villa, their first intermediate game after coming up from Junior Ale um, last year. So they beat Kilowan McDonald's 117 to 10 points. 117 was great scoring, Philly. Oh, a fantastic score, yeah. And uh, they have a fairly balanced team throughout, like um, uh, Beth Ryan there at centre back, and uh, lots of lots of minors and, and under 16 players that played with Tip over the last few years, and Leonie Farrell and uh, um, uh, Megan McCormick, Quiva McCormick, uh, then the two that made the senior panel, Emer Heffernan and, and, and Quiva McCarthy, uh, they were able to play Arena Friday wing forward. And their other wing forward is, is from the under 16 B team, Ellen Brown, uh, scored four points to play. Like, so she, she's probably a girl that was missed out on uh, by under 16 selectors. Uh, score six, four points to play in intermediate is a great achievement. So um, uh, lots of talent there in Lockavella. Um, Kilran McDonough, I suppose they got to the league final and lost to Newport early in the year. So they'll be probably disappointed with that uh, that uh, performance, supposedly missing two, two, two players through injury and work. So, so maybe they'll be stronger next week. And then uh, Boris Lee had a great win as well. They bet Newport 313 to 36. Um, I suppose Boris, Boris Lee, um, you know, their two big names always are Nicole Walsh and Julianne Burke. But, you know, they've done a lot of work underage in the club and they've had a lot of success. And it's great to see, um, you know, the likes of um, Emma Galvin, Katie Fitzgerald, I suppose, coming up through the juvenile ranks and, you know, playing a big part now on their intermediate team. And I think that's really straightened up the Boris Lee team. Um, I know that Nicole Walsh got 11 points. Um, so out of the 313, Aoife Ryan scored two goals and Orange Saint and another goal. But um, I think Boris Lee will have a big say in this intermediate championship this year. Would you agree? Uh, definitely, yeah. And, and they were they're really up for the game. They, they led 1-5 to two points after a few minutes. So I think Boris Lee was were, were showing that they were out to win this game from the very start. And then Shannon Rovers um, had a big win over Care. That might have surprised a lot of people. Two fifteen to nine points. Uh, Care were very impressive in the Junior A Championship last year, but I suppose they had all their players, um, the dual players as well. And you know, Ashley Maloney obviously is injured. Uh, no, Ashley McCarthy. I presume she's probably gone back to Australia. I don't know if you know about that, Philly Bush. Um, I know she didn't play. 
so, you know, they still had uh, Roisin Howard, obviously, up, up front um, and, and so on. But obviously, the two Ashleys are a big loss. And, you know, I suppose nine points is not going to be enough to win many games. But 215 was a very impressive scoring with Shannon Rovers. And I suppose to welcome back Aoife Malachny from, uh, from injury. I know she missed out at the latter stages of the championship last year. She got injured. She missed the county final against Turles. So, you know, Shannon Rovers beaten in the county final last year would be a lot of people's favourites for the Intermediate Championship this year. I think so, yeah. And just talking to some Shannon Rovers people who were at the match, they said Anya Slattery's puckouts were a massive advantage. They were landing right down on the on the uh, care back line, uh, which is a, a, a fair attribute. And uh, also they... they they have had a lot, lot of players came back from county duty too, you know, like Sabrina Larkin, Anya Lennon, and Emer Fogarty. They played some of them played minor. Uh, two of the stars of under 16 8 team this year were Celine Guinan at midfield and Neil Franks at fullback. And they both lined out uh, for Sean Rover, Celine Guinan at full forward on their intermediate team, and Neil Franks at wing back. So Lots of talent coming through in, in, in Shannon Rovers also that, that'll fill out that team and make them real contenders for the Intermediate Championship. Great stuff. So just looking at the fixtures then for this weekend, um, so on Saturday, the FBD Intermediate uh, Championship sees Killer One play Shannon Rovers and Newport uh, are at home to Naka Villa and Burris Lee against Kerr. Uh, do you want a chance to ca call in winners there in those three games, Philly? Killer One and Shannon Rovers? Well, I think the three teams that showed form last week, um, you know, are all are all avoiding each other. So you'd expect, uh, and I'm putting my neck in the block here by saying, Shannon Rovers could beat Kilderwan, Nakavella could beat Newport, and Boris Lee could beat Care. And I'm predicting last week's three winners to win again. So that's Very putting my head in the block, Charlie. <laughs> good stuff. We'll see how that goes. Uh, so FB, moving on to the FBD Insurance Junior A Championship. Uh, Hasn't started yet, but it begins this weekend. Um, I think there's Sunday games. Yeah, Sunday morning. We have Templemore at home to Killadangan. Feathered are at home to Holy Cross. They're both in Group 1. And then, um, how, how would you see them go, games going first? Templemore, obviously, up from Junior B. They won the Junior B County Final. Um, got to the Junior A League Final as well. So that was a great achievement in their first year. Um, so Templemore and Kill Killadangan, how would you how would you see that one going? Um, I, I think Templemore have have progressed very well from 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 Junior B ranks. The Dangan um, actually knocked out Borlahan in in the Junior in the Junior A League. Uh, so we're showing some form at that stage. Have Sinead Mar to come back from intermediate ranks? So uh, yeah, I couldn't call the Templemore the Dangan game. Uh, Possibly Temple Moor with their fitness for the football, possibly uh, might 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 sneak them ahead, maybe. Yes, Temple Moor has some um, some great players like Sir Ruth Butler. Um, I know she's called up to tip into media panel this year, I suppose, after her club performances last year. Um, Kay Cashman, another good player. Uh, so be interested to see how they go. But Sinead Mara, I thought, was really good for tip into media, and she's such a threat there in full forward. Um, so she's obviously a huge player for Kildangan. Uh, she had a fantastic Hoy game in the Munster final uh, in drag uh, against Cork. I think Sinead Maher really led led the forwards there, winning a few frees right at the end of that game and scoring a few points. So when Sinead Maher hits form, she can win frees and score. So really proved it that day. Feather and Holy Cross then uh, is is the other game. Um, so obviously both both clubs will be looking to get off to get their uh, campaign off to a winning start. Um, uh, Holy Cross, I suppose, had Lorna, Lorna O'Dwyer and Claire Stakel. I mean, training with the tip seniors all year, so they're going to be big key players. It's such an advantage, I suppose, to be exposed to that training all year and come back to your club then. Yeah, a, a very good advantage, yeah. Um, Federer did give uh, a lot of junior teams uh, very close games last year. They played the, their um, Tipperary ladies football fullback Lucy Splan at centre forward on their Camogie team and she ran at defences and caused lots of trouble. So um, I, I wouldn't say Holy Cross will have it any way easy against Federer and a uh, uh, difficult one to call, but maybe Holy Cross by two or three points, maybe. And then in group two, we have two fixtures as well. Uh, Money Gall are uh, home to Brian Brews and Borland, then your own club um, take on Ballina and that's in Borland. So Moneygall and Brian Bruce, obviously, when you see Moneygall, you think of Mary Ryan. 
um, a key player for them. Obviously, you have Marie Tehan, um, plays her county commode with awfully big player as well. So, um, Monigal were beaten by Knock Villa last year in the Junior A county semi final. Um, we'll ho- hope we we'll be hoping to go one step further this year. But, um, Brian Bruce, uh, won the Junior A league final, didn't they? There a few weeks back, I think, didn't they? They did against Seven Moore and uh. Quiva Ryan was on serious form there at centre forward, scoring a lot of points. Great to run, solo in his defence and pop over points. So, uh, Monday goal would be wary to watch uh, Quiva Ryan's uh, scoring power there from Brian Bruce. And their backs were very steady as well. Uh, so, uh, it's uh, Brian Bruce have the under 16 goalie, Casey Meehan, as well, uh, who played both under 16A and minor A this year uh, for Tipperary. So, uh, uh, a good Thank keeper you. there for Brian Bruce. Uh, hard one to call maybe Money Gall's experience from uh, getting to last year's semi final uh, might see them over the line. And then the final fixture in the Junior A Borland and Ballina. Um, how would you see this one going or how are Borland going uh, well, this year so far? It's 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 hard to know. Uh, we we a lot of I suppose a disruptive team because we have um, we had uh, Lisa O'Connor and Leah Kavanagh on the the minors and Sarah Delaney on the on the uh, Senior Camogie panel and Claude Horgan on the footballer. So we've those four back now, so they should strengthen our team considerably. Uh, so we're not really sure. We've had ding dong battles with Balna over the last few years, so I couldn't call this one. Well, Balna, then, you know, names like Avi Ward and um, Elaine King, I suppose she's won a good few uh, county titles with Burgess to Harrow down through the years, back playing with her home club, Balna now. So uh, and I know they've had a lot of underage success, huge work going on in Balna in the last couple of years. So they'll be looking to... Uh, to yeah, Balna actually won the minor A title uh, a few years ago. And to win a minor A means you've got talent coming. So uh, maybe those minor A girls who are now around 2021 will really show it at, at junior A level this year. Yeah, so look, we look forward to seeing how all those games go and we'll have a, a better uh, feel for how each of the clubs are progressing in the championship in junior A this year. Uh, moving on to the Junior B Championship, FBD Insurance Junior B Championship begins this weekend. Uh, group one, round one, we have Carrick Swans and Laura, and then Maya Rovers and Ballingarry. Um, familiar with those teams, Philly, Carrick Swans and Laura? I know we have yeah, uh, Laura. Claude, Claude McIntyre with, with Laura tends to run out of I know Ken Hogan was in charge of them last year. And, and what a few a few late frees missed. Uh, a quick, they could have uh, beaten Templemore. It was a fantastic game between Laura and Templemore. Ding dong. The lead changed t- sides lots of times during the second half there. And uh, Laura just pipped for, I think, the fourth time in their effort to get out of junior B rank. So Laura will be one of the favourites again this year. And just to say that we were still in, in, in summer league action in, in junior B because um, uh, McCarkey played Gordon Hu in the delayed junior B league final. Um, in the Camogie grounds um, on this Sunday. So, um, McCarkey, I think, with all the, with the, maybe they're too young yet, but they're under 16 uh, A champions this year and have Kate Ralph, Alicia Kearney, lots of players coming through and uh, a, a few minors as well. So, uh, McCarkey will make a big impact in, in Junior B, if not this year, in, in the next two or three years. So, um, I'd say if you want to get out of Junior B, get out quick before McCarkey improve. And the fact that McCarkey and Gurton, who were in the league final, you know, they'll obviously be two, two of the top teams uh, heading into championship. But like you said, Laura have been there, thereabouts, um, you know, trying to get out of Junior B for the last few years. So w- would you still have Laura as your favourites? Um, well, just on that point, uh, I think Gurton, who have already beaten McCarkey in the round robin. So uh, even though they're meeting in the summer league in the final, uh, Gurton, who have a, a prior win against McCarkey. So it's even hard to call that that league final. So, um, yeah, Junior B. I, 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 let's let's make Laura favourites because they've been so close so many times. But um, I'm not so sure. Um, uh, it will, will there be a new team on the block uh, just like Templemore came last year? And then my Rovers and Ballingarry, I suppose, is the last fixture there in the FBD Junior FBD Junior B Championship. Um, that's at eleven o'clock. And my Rovers are at home. Um, Hard one to call again, I suppose. I suppose clubs that are really trying to make the breakthrough at adult level, a lot of work going on at underage, and uh, and you know, um, how how do you yeah, see I think that? Yeah, Rovers. 
I think Mile Rovers would have won that fixture last year. I'm not sure. I think they did. So I I, I think I just pip pip Mile Rovers to win that one, yeah. And then the FBD Junior B2 Championship begins as well at the weekend. I suppose we're looking there at, at club's second teams. Um, we've Silver Mines against Burgess, Anna Carty against Shannon Rovers, Clonty and Ballina, and then Cashel and Care are the four fixtures there. So that's the FBD Junior B2 Championship. I suppose credit to all those clubs, big numbers in at training, obviously, able to field second adult teams and and um We'll keep an eye on all those fixtures and we'll have the results for you as well. So keep an eye out for uh, to break Mogi social media as well for updates on fixtures and scores. And of course, our brand new website, Um, One other fixture just to mention, uh, it's the under 14A championship final. Um, it's on this Saturday and it's McCarkey and Holy Cross, uh, two clubs we spoke about earlier. Again, great underage uh, work being done in both those clubs and Great to see them contesting an under 14A final. Oh, yeah. So I was involved with TIP uh, under 14 development squad this year. So I've got to know a lot of the McCarkey and uh, and uh, and Holy Cross players. Um, Emily O'Dwyer, full forward for Holy Cross, putting away a lot of goals. Kate Dowling from McCarkey doesn't miss a free. Uh, uh, Sophie Lee from McCar- for Holy Cross dominates the field. Um, there's uh, three Corkin girls on the McCarkey team as well. It's very hard, to, very hard to call this final. Both are comfortable wins in the semi-final. Um, uh, McCarkey uh, <clears throat> and Holy Cross uh, both won fairly comfortably in the semi-final, so it's hard to say who's going to win it, but I'd probably tip Holy Cross on their better score power, maybe, uh, by a, a pint or two in that final, yeah. Okay, Philly, thanks very much for that. Um, that preview and review of the FBD Insurance uh, uh, Adult and Minor Club Championships. Um, just to move on there before we finish up, um, obviously Galway are the newly crowned All-Ireland uh, champions. Uh, no doubt you watched this game. It was a brilliant final. And they bet Cork, um, a really humdinger of a game. Um, I suppose after watching that, would you think, are we closer or further away to a Camogie All-Ireland? I suppose we were beaten by Galway. And on the day, it definitely looked like we had chances to win that game. So you'd, you'd imagine you could say that we're closer, uh, very close to win that, uh, an all Ireland in Tipperary. But I felt also that, you know, it just, it, you know, it was really, in, it was nearly, a, you know, the intensity, um, the speed, everything was was nearly a level higher than, than our semi-final with Galway. Did you think that or what were your thoughts after? Oh, I thought it was a fantastic final. Um, okay, the, the scores weren't that high at half time, but... If you just watch the game closely, the, 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 the every 50-50 ball was fought for fairly and there was lots, the, the, the block downs, the hooks were tremendous. Uh, the support play, people off, running off the shoulder, looking for, for passes, uh, the tactics from Carl Murray and Paddy Murray were really interesting. So yes, the, the intensity on our final day, but I, I would think that if Tip or Kakenny were also in the final, I think we would also step it up to uh, really you know, give 120% on All-Ireland final day. So I think if we were in that situation, we would have also gone up another 10%. So let's hope we, we have the ability to get up that 10%. But it was an absolutely fantastic final. And just looking back at the two goals at the very end, um, Katrina Mackey uh, got through, hit the ball in front of her um, opponent, knocked it into the top corner, a fantastic goal. Um, Galway didn't lose the head scored uh, pints in play. I think it was Arla McGrath. And then the fantastic ball from Ailey Shoreilly through to Siobhan McGrath. Siobhan McGrath with only a quarter of a hurley to, to tip it past the on-Russian goalkeeper, Amy Lee, into the corner of the net. Uh, such quick thinking. And uh, I would just talk the <clears throat> some of the scores in the match were fantastic. So a really, really entertaining All-Ireland final uh, with huge intensity. Yeah, a fantastic game. I suppose Komogi was the... Out and out winner there. Um, thanks, Philly. Great chatting to you. Um, great to get your thoughts on all the fixtures. And um, like I said, we have a really exciting FBD insurance uh, club championship to look forward to now for the next couple of weeks. And um, we hope to to bring you all the previews and reviews on the Camogie Report every week. So um, be sure to to stay tuned. And uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to Tipperary Camogie's YouTube channel.